Tyler, uh, where did your first wholesale deal uh, came from? Uh, it came from a driving for dollars list. And uh, skipped, how much was it? it? How much was it? The the profit? Yeah. 36500 Boom! What <laughs> up, what up, wholesale to million family? Happy Monday. I hope you guys are starting out with a great Monday. Hope you all had a great weekend. And uh, please, if you like, um, like if this interview add any value to you or you'd like me to continue doing the uh, first wholesale deal interview, let me know. Smash the thumbs up, you guys. If you're new to the channel, boom, smash the subscribe button. Make sure to turn on your bell notifications so when I upload a new video or when I go live, you guys get notified. And also, too, maybe you have some friends or some business partner or whatever, some colleagues that is in this wholesaling journey with you and they're losing motivation or inspiration. What I want you to do is man, share this video with them, get them onto the family, and let's rock and roll. Let's inspire them and motivate them to get them uh, to go after their dreams and that they can do it. You know, I'm, exa I'm excited for this interview, man. He's young, um, has a ton of drives and, and ambitions. His story's going against the whole traditional Asian parents telling him to go to college and to get a degree. He decided to do this, so I I'm so excited to bring him on. But uh, before I bring uh, Tyler on, to share with you guys his stories, how he got his full, uh, wholesale deal, and how he landed thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars. Um, I wanted to let those of you who don't know, I'm running a two K web class. Happened on August thirty-first. All right, this is where I spent the whole entire day with you um, to take your life, your business to a whole another level. Whether you're new, you're starting out, maybe you're a few months in, trying to get your first wholesale deal, but you're lost, you're confused, you're overwhelmed, you're stressing out, you don't know which path or direction to go down at or you know, to go down so you can feel, so you can have the confidence to go all in. Or maybe you have done a couple of deals, but you're looking to scale your business up, putting a system, putting a team in place. On that day, what I'm doing is that I'll share with you all the tips, all the tools, all the strategies, all the companies, everything that we're currently using right now that's working, a whole entire business system to, uh, uh, together, including the, the, the King Kong seller script. I'll give it all to you on that day. My goal is for you to come um, and let me know, hey, Kong, here's my situations. Here's my goal, man. And I'll give you a clear action plan blueprint just for you to go and execute and make it happen. But remember, I'll give you all the knowledge, all the information, all the connection, everything that you're going to need to be successful. But you must put in the W-O-R-K, man. So if that's you I'm talking to, it's only for the 20 people, August 31st. Uh, 2000 per person or per couple. Maybe you have a business partner. Um, shoot an email over to wholesale to millions, wholesale to millions at gmail.com, and I'm ready to rock and roll and take your life, your business to the next level. So, you guys, put your hand, put your thumb together. No further ado. Help me bring on Tyler. What up, buddy? Well, Kong, thank you for having me on the, uh, on the YouTube channel, on the podcast. I, really, I was really excited for this episode. And I just want to first all, First of all, I'll start off by saying I can testify to that web class because Kong will set you straight. He taught me the systems. He gave me the blueprint and I just followed it. And, you know, that's how I got my first deal. Um, <laughs> thanks, bro. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, dude. And um, now, um, so, hey, Tyler, go ahead. And uh, what I want to do is kind of share with everybody kind of uh, you, your stories, how you decided to go in this, this route and then leading into your first wholesale deal, bro. Dude, okay. I'm, so, I'm so excited for this, dude. I'm so happy for you, bro. Thank you. Because for those of you who don't know, like when I see the younger people like Tyler coming up, right? <laughs> dude, I get so inspired because I was like, man, I wish I started when I was your age. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kong. Um, so I got started in real estate investing, like being interested in it probably about a year and a half ago. I started watching YouTube videos and uh, I decided I want to buy my first house. So I started networking with realtors, other professionals. And during that time too, I was also going to college and I made a choice. I said, you know, I can either keep going to college and listen to my parents or I can take a risk and follow my dreams, follow my passion. So I dropped out of college and I believed in myself and I just started going for it, you know, um, fast forward to March of this year, I found a property. It was a pocket listing from a realtor. And we went ahead and closed on it. It's a three bed, two bath, uh, three bed, two bath, and it's a house hack. So I rent out the bedrooms, and it covers the mortgage, covers the utilities. So basically, I live for free. And then after that, you know, I was going to a real estate event, and my my buddy sent me this YouTube episode uh, of this guy that was talking about how he was 
making $250,000 a month wholesaling. And I was like, $250,000, that's a lot of money, but to do that in a month? So I was so interested, so I, I started following him more and more. And eventually I was like, dude, I gotta do this, like this is my business. So um, I, you know, I, I started wholesaling July 1st, that's when I got in contact with Kong. You know, I bought his course, How to Wholesale, and um, I signed up for his web class. He set me straight. And then from then on, I just did a, a month of consistent marketing, consistent driving for dollars, sending out postcards, talking to sellers. And there was a lot of times when it's just, you know, you day in, day, in, day out, I'm just cold calling, um, reaching voicemails or just getting cussed out by people. But, you know, eventually I found, I found a deal. And it was, I didn't get it locked up on the first, the first time, but consistent follow-up and consistent marketing led me to land that contract. And I locked, I locked it up for 120. The next day I uh, marked it out to my cash buyers in my market and uh, I found a buyer for 156.5. So I just netted 36.5. Uh, uh, Tyler, uh, dude, you tell the story like it's nothing. Oh yeah. I locked it up. <laughs> so uh, now Tyler, everybody probably want to know, man, did you do a double closing or did you just uh, straight uh, assign it? Assign it. When I was talking to my cash buyer, She's actually, you know, a friend of mine. Uh, we've built a relationship before, but I said, you know, are you going to have a problem with my assignment fee? And she said, no, like we're more than happy. As long as the numbers work for us, we're more than happy to, you know, treat our wholesalers right because you're, you know, you deserve a piece of the pie too. So I just did a simple assignment. Awesome, man. Love it. Love it. When you come across one of those buyers that they don't care what, um, our wholesaler makes, they understand that, you know, we spend a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energies trying to get these deals for them. Um, so, okay. So let's talk about, uh, now how did you, how, okay. So you drive for dollars and you found, so let's talk about the deal a little bit, man. How do you came in contact with the seller? So, you know, it was just another driving for dollars lead. I skip traced it with batch skip tracing and then I cold call it using Mojo. And when I, talk to the seller. First of all, I used your script. That script is gold. And, you know, I asked him, you know, what are you hoping to walk away with that closing once all the closing costs are taken care of? And he named a price and it was basically half of what, you know, I thought the house was worth. So I was like, what was okay. it? Okay. He said he's happy to walk away with 125. Okay. And, and the, what was the, uh, what was the ARV on it? Like 215. <laughs> so in my head, I was like, okay, this, you know, my palms are getting sweaty. I'm like, okay, this might be a deal. <laughs> so I just go through the script and I actually got uh, him to agree on a price. We agreed on 110. So I sent him over the contract and uh, I said, I have to put an expired date on here, but he was having some computer problems and he couldn't access his email. So he couldn't sign it right away. And basically like, even though we agreed on a price, I didn't get it locked up. Um, so I just called him every week, you know, building that emotional rapport and just, you know, building a connection with him. He starts to like me more and more. And then eventually like a couple weeks later, I was just calling him again saying, you know, hi, how's it going? Like, how's life? Just talking to him, not even talking about the house, you know, just to catch up. And finally he was just like, I just want to be done with this house. You know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sell this. And then you guys come back and renegotiate later because he finds something about the house. And in my head, I already knew that it's such a great deal. Then I told him, I'm like, okay, if we can get, if we can get this approved today, and come to an agreement today and get the paperwork done today, I can give you my word that we won't renegotiate. And uh, he also didn't want, he didn't want to pay the taxes for August because it was coming up. So I said, we'll take care of the taxes if we close after the taxes are due. And he was happy with that. So I drove over to his house this time and I, I got the, I printed out the, the agreement and I got a sign there. <laughs> so, but you gotta, you, you gotta sign not at 110 at 120. Yeah. Okay. He, he came back and he said, no, I want 125. And I said, can we do 120? And then we, we met at 120. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it's under contract for now. Where did, okay. So you, okay. So the buy was through a friend, right? Hot Tyler. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I spent a first, uh, the first couple of days I began wholesaling, I just spent building up my cash buyer list to 50, hundred people. Okay. Um, but this cash buyer that I actually went with, we're friends because we met in a different, a couple different um, networking groups in my in my market. Nice. Yeah. So, dude, everybody probably go, go, gonna ask you. So, Tyler, what are some so what are some ways or some sites that you are uh, building up your cash buyer, bro? First of all, Craigslist. I search we buy houses, sell my house fast. You know, 
And then I just look for all the ads and I call them up and I say, you know, I focus on finding deeply discounted properties. Um, you know, when I, whenever I find a deal, can I send it your way? And they're, they're always like, oh yeah, sure. Please add me to your list. And then I always ask them like, are you a cash buyer? Are you a wholesaler? You know, a lot of them are wholesalers, but there are cash buyers on Craigslist. So I look for that. I also look on Facebook. Facebook's a great one. Facebook marketplace, Facebook groups. I join different local Facebook groups for real estate investing. And instead of putting, you know, cash buyers, I just search, I use the search bar in the group cash buyer. And then there's already so many posts that people have already asked, like looking for cash buyers, people drop their emails. So I just add them to my, to my list. And, uh, you know, I found a couple cash buyers too, just networking at the local RIA and I uh, go into different groups that way too. Nice. Okay. So now you got the property locked up under contract. Now, how did, okay. So let's talk about, so how many bedroom and bathroom is, is the property, Tyler? It was, it was a two one. Okay. And square footage? I think 1100. Okay. And does it need like a complete update? I'm sorry. Like, uh, does it need a complete, uh, rehab? Uh, you know, I'm not too sure on the estimate rehab estimate is probably 25. Okay. 25,000. 25,000. Now is that now is, is, is that with granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, tile bathroom yeah, floors and all I, that? I walked the house and it was like original stuff. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now the so Tyler, so in this, in this area, you, you, when you update, you can go with the whole bell and whistle granite countertop and all that. Yeah. Okay. So you estimated the ARV was to be two fifteen, and with twenty five thousand, that that that's okay. So that's going to be your rehab. Yeah, and Vegas is a really competitive market too. So, um, you know, typically the the typical seven, uh, ARV times point seven. I think a lot of the buyers in this area are buying at point eight five, point eight, just because deals are hard to come by here. You know. Okay. Gotcha. So uh, for those of you who don't know, Tyler just mentioned that, uh, you know, a majority of buyers likes the 30% discount. Um, but in, in Vegas, it, where Tyler's at, it's the market is very competitive. There's a lot of cash buyers, like a lot of actions going on. So people are willing to like, hey, take a 25% discount. They're okay with a 20% discount. And that's why I talk so much about you guys got to understand your buyers and you got to need, you got to understand your market. If you keep on hunting for the 30%, and you're passing on the 25% and 20% discount, you, you know, obviously you might uh, be uh, cutting yourself short. And once you got a property lock up at a 30% discount and you're assigning it to your cash buy at a 30% discount, where if they're okay with a 20% discount, you know, you, you could leave yourself a 10% uh, margin there uh, that you could have been, uh, that you could have made. So 20, okay. So 25 K in rehab. So let me see here. Um, now, Tyler, what's going on? So what's going on with the uh, property? Like what's, what's the situation with the seller? It's been vacant for six months. The last tenant moved out um, six months ago. And with the seller, his partner passed away in January. So he's just been going through a rough time and he's getting kind of older. So he's looking to liquidate. And, um, you know, once, once we made the agreement, he gave me the keys and he said, I don't know if I should tell you this, but here's the keys. And I just want this to be the last time I ever see these keys. And I said, don't worry, man. Like I'll make this as easy as possible for you. And I just took care of everything after that. <laughs> okay. So, so you got the keys, the property is vacant. So now it's, it's obviously it's going to be easy to show to the buyers. So your buyer went out there and did the walkthrough on the property. Yeah, I actually, um, I sent it out to all my cash buyers and I had a showing the next day. Um, just all day. So a bunch of buyers came, did a, did a walkthrough and then I was just taking highest and best. And I had to basically bid up against each other and we settled on the highest, which is 156.5. Okay. Gotcha. Now, but how much do you send it out to? So at the beginning, how much did you send it out to your buyer for? The asking was 150. Okay. Wow. Okay. So bid up. Wow. Okay. Nice, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hustle up, man. Gotcha. Okay. So, so basically, so you, so you got the property sold within the first day, Tyler, of showing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And how much was the earnest money between you and the seller? Um, you know, my mentor was telling me 5,000, but mm -hmm. the seller asked for 2,000 just because they had, they were qualifying for financing and I think money was a little tight. So I was okay with doing 2,000 just because I knew that they could close. Gotcha. Okay. So, so, okay. So the, 
um, the deposit with you and the buyers that you asked from the buyers. So you got a $2,000 non-refundable from your buyers. From the buyer. Okay. Yeah. Now what's the earnest money with you and the seller? <laughs> 50 bucks. <laughs> you know, now, now when I do my agreements, I put $1. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Tyler, I love it, man. So those of you who, because I know for some of you, you let the earnest money holding you back. Kong, well, uh, what if they ask for the earnest money, this and that? Listen, if you know how to talk and communicate with the seller, if you're working directly with the seller, it should, like the earnest money you guys should like rarely, like shouldn't even come up. Like for like, since I've been doing this for the eight years, man, I haven't had any where the sellers ask for the earnest money unless one, they have a realtor that they've been talking with and, and, and they know about it. Other is I work with a, an agent. Otherwise, if you work directly with the seller, the seller, all they want to know is one, they don't want, they don't want to be scammed. Two is that they want to make sure that you are legit and that uh, they get the amount of money that is agreed upon. That rarely that the earnest money comes, uh, comes up, but um, so, for, so those of you who let the earnest money holding you back, please get over yourself, learn how to communicate with the seller properly. So that way don't bring up, don't be the one that bring up the earnest money. All right. If you don't bring it up, they're not going to bring it up. Just add it to your, add it in your agreement and you should be good. So, okay. So let me see here, man. Um, so you got the buyers to walk and how, and, and how long was the, now, first of all, how long do you tie it up with the seller for Tyler? I put 45 days. Nice. Okay. So 45 days. And how long did it took you to find the buyers? One day. One day. And then how <laughs> long was the closing with the buyers? Two weeks. Gotcha. Okay. That's when we closed. Now the buyers, are they cash or are they using some kind of hard money? Uh, they, they did some financing. I don't know if it was hard money, but they did some financing. Gotcha, man. So, cause typically you guys, for those of you who don't know, if a buyer, if a buy half their, if a, if the buyer has cash, their own cash sitting in the bank, they can close this thing as quickly as whenever the title is clear and all the paperwork can be done by the title company. Typically, they can do it in two days, in three days, in five days. Um, but if buyers go through like any kind of um, lending, like uh, a hard, hard money lending, they usually ask for two weeks to get all the paperwork done. Um, so I guess in this case, it's probably uh, hard money, but it could be private. Um, so let me see, man. So. That's pretty much it, man. So now you, so Tyler, how did you, so people probably all, uh, people probably want to know, man, like, like I also want to know, man, like how does it feel to go like against whatever, you know, your parents and, and, and everybody's was saying, you know, most of this business is mindset. And so I went to an event last year and it really trained me on how to have the right mindset for real estate investing. So I came back and, you know, I started changing my beliefs from all these limiting ones to powerful, empowering beliefs. And, you know, that's how I developed faith and belief in myself and just trust that I can do uh, anything and just trust that if I, you know, whatever my, my mind tells me, like, just follow it, follow my dreams, follow what feels right. And it'll, it'll come, everything will work out. And so that's just what gave me the faith to drop out of um, college even the faith to buy a house, even though like it was scary, like, you know, what if the rooms don't rent, you know, I'll be stuck with a mortgage, all this. And eventually, you know, I took a personal leave for my job. Uh, the max I can take is four months and I took it so I can do wholesaling full time. And that was another leap of faith, you know, because what if I don't find a deal in time, then I have to go back and just, you know, I'm really happy that I, I took a risk and it, at times, you know, it was kind of scary because money's, money's getting a little short. My credit cards are all maxed out. I'm literally dead broke. But the broker I get, the more faith I had because I just felt that something was coming. Wow, you know bro. What that means, yeah. Dude, wow, bro. And uh, Tyler, how old are you, bro? I'm 21. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when I, was, when I was 21, bro, I was working in the mall and I was working at a company making custom orthotics. For those of you who don't know, I used to work at a company for like eight years making custom orthotics, like the insole uh, for the shoes, like super feet. So uh, anyways, that's the, that, that's the story to Tyler on his deal. You guys have any questions, comment below. And uh, now, Tyler, man, let's wrap this up. For those that are starting out, man, and, I, and for those that are starting out, probably, you know, lost, confused, and all stressing out, 
maybe they're questioning themselves, like, is this for me? Should I quit? Dude, what are some tips, advice that you can give them? Because how do you push through all that, bro? Oh, I love this question. So first of all, if Khan can do it, I always <laughs> tell myself this. If Khan can do it and he was born in a mud hut, then I can do it. And if I can do it, then literally anyone can do it. It just takes hard work, consistency in both marketing to sellers and following up and faith in yourself. And you know, it's, it's faith and belief until you get this first deal. And now that I have the first deal under my belt, now I'm just like, I can do this. Let's, you know, let's scale and let's get the ball rolling. Let's, let's accelerate. <laughs> um, one big thing that helps too, just, you know, that 2K masterclass, it might be a lot of money for some, but that could be the step that you need to take because Kong's, Kong's mastered his craft and he has the systems in place so he can teach you and really just accelerate your growth instead of you having to learn everything on your own. Tyler, I, uh, I, dude, I appreciate that, man. And, um, you know, it's an honor, dude, to have you in the class and just to see you, you know, just to see you making it happen, dude, it, it makes me extremely happy. Um, you know, so now Tyler, for those that want to follow you or connect with you, man, where can they do that? Um, I don't know if you're part of the wholesaling to, Wholesale to Millions group, but I'm on there. You can search me, Ty Labrador. My Instagram is T Labrador. You can connect with me there. Um, those are the two main things that I'm on. Facebook, you can add me, Ty Labrador. I live in Las Vegas. There's not many Ty Labradors out there. <laughs> so um, Facebook, Instagram? Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, and those are the two basic ones that I'm on. Okay. And, uh, one, one big thing that was just pushing me is, you know, when I bought your course, there was two videos that stuck out. The first one, when he talked about commitment and he said it was like a marriage. And I wrote down on a note card and I said, I'm committed to my business partner, to Kong and to myself. I'm going to close my first deal this year. <laughs> and then the last video, you showed a trophy. It was like two hands, you know? Yeah. And I, I saw that trophy and I was like, I want that trophy. So I'm going to get that trophy. <laughs> so Tyler, the trophy, bro, it's on its way to your <laughs> Mikasa. It's on, your, it's on its way to your house, bro. And uh, once again, Tyler, I want to say congrats. And I remember, I remember seeing that post in the Wholesale to Millions uh, Facebook uh, group, man. So for those of you who want to join the Wholesale to Millions Facebook group, um, you got to have one of the package. So if, if, if you're interested in the King Kong seller script, man, the link is in the description. It's four ninety five. But man, trust me, it'll take, your, it'll take your phone call, your negotiating skill like to the next level, and you get access to our, our private Facebook group. But I remember when you put that on, bro, dude, I see that and I say, wow, this guy, <laughs> this guy seriously want to get <laughs> this done, man. And uh, I say, oh, you know, so dude, I'm so happy, man. And I'm so excited for you. And also, too, is for those of you who are, um, you know what, I, I just created another Facebook group that is public to everybody, but there's so many, like, I created so many different one that you guys have to type in at, at wholesale to millions because the reason why I created so many other one, because I was trying to figure out how can I, how can I do it so that way it doesn't link to my other one where my friends and families knows about it. For those of you who don't know, that's the one reason that's holding me back from creating a Facebook, from starting a Facebook in the first place, because I didn't want to know friends and family. Like, the not, not that I don't want them to know about what I'm doing, but I don't want them, to, I just don't want to cause any conflict, any jealousy, any hate, because trust me. So, hey, now moving this into that, bro, because, 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 listen, everybody, families is different. I know my family, all right? My family is a little, it's a little bit different than some. Tyler, let me ask you this, bro. Does your, fa does your family know now that you just closed your first deal? <laughs> well, let me tell you this, you know, I'm really careful who I spend my time with. And now that I've, you know, learned wholesaling and done more personal development, I can see a lot of people out there that have such a broke mindset. So I'm really careful who I share my success with because, you know, they're happy for you. But if you become too successful, there's, they start to get envious, you know? So, oh, yeah, man. Uh, for, as far as my family, I told my dad because he, he, he's been asking me, he's like, Hey, how's work going? And I said, Oh, actually I left my job. I'm starting a business. And then I went over to the house the other day and it was just him and, uh, you know, my brother and I, I pulled him aside and I was like, check this out. And I showed him the picture of the check and his mind was like, what? And I said, don't tell mom, I'm going to tell her when, uh, when I'm rich. <laughs> Cause my mom's the one that had the most problem with me dropping out of college. So I'd rather just surprise her by showing her dude tyler man respect bro that's awesome your dad must be so proud of you bro so yeah, proud just, of you dude 
I just, I told him, I was like, I just want to let you know that, you know, I'm doing good. Don't think that, you know, I'm broke right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude. Okay. So that man lead into this story. So basically for those of you who don't know, like, like Lon and I, Lon and I keep our things pretty, pretty on the down low when it comes to our families and our friends of what we share with them. So anyways, Lon brother, Lon has an older brother that she respect the most. And, uh, he, he, he's the one that came over here, man. Um, for those of you who, who's, who, who's the Vietnamese, you know this. He come over here as in, not fly, but in the boat, right? The FOB, that's him, man. Fresh off the boat. This is the guy. Came over here, man, starting with nothing, with zero. Scrubbing toilet, worked multiple jobs. Uh, pick, um, he was picking mushrooms, scrubbing toilets, doing, uh, being a janitor, all of that. So he told us. Uh, my wife, the story about that, I used to scrub bathroom and toilet, there's poop all over. And he said, I suck it up and I did it because my goal was to get the whole entire family over. Dude, the guy makes so much sacrifices and he, he brought everybody over here to, and he wants to see everyone successful. This is the guy, this is the only guy that I think in the family is actually truly really happy for us, um, seeing us succeed and things like that. So anyways, and I remember, man, he came down and when when and dude this is the guy that is extremely strict about going to school and get education extremely his like extremely and um um and and the first time that he saw us was we were living in a little shack behind a mobile home park and he's like oh man you know everybody came over here gamble right asian we got like gambling blood right everybody can gamble and um, everybody didn't really create the future or the life that he want them to create. And then, um, so, so when he see us like that, I was kind of a, dis a disappointment. And let me tell you guys something, man. He preached, he preached about the whole school thing, school things, getting education and all that. So we, you know, and then when we got a little bit of success, he kind of know, he kind of know, but not too much. And then one day we decided, you know what, and this was about two years or three years ago, we decided, you know what, it's time to let him know, right? Because he, we, we, just like Tyler just said, we didn't want him to like worry about us and, and think that, oh my God, because he saw us bought this. But well, when he saw us bought the house at 23, he was worried. He's like, oh my God, like, like I hope they, they know what they're doing because now, um, you know, we're, we're taking, like the house only like 350, but he's seeing these 23 year old buying a house and got a mortgage and all of that. So he was kind of worried. So about just a couple of years ago, we decided, you know what, to let him know. It's the time to let him know, dude. We started sending him checks, bro. Like every week was a couple of <laughs> checks sent to his phone. The guy freaks out. Listen, he freaks out. He said, oh my God. And this is what he said. He said, I've never seen anybody <laughs> make this kind of money as easy as you guys. Because, dude, this, so he was, he, he was massive labor. So now he owns a restaurant, but he works there all the time. All the time. He's in his 60s, still working. And uh, throughout his life, he was, um, he does a lot of uh, uh, constructions. Like he's a general contractor. He got his business license, he got his team, but he was working all the time. And Lon saw that, right? So when he sees us sending checks like this, and all we do is just get on the phone and talking to people, right? So one day I sat him down and kind of explained to him exactly kind of how we do it and how we make our money. He's like, <laughs> he just shook his head and he said, he said that he can never believe, like he just couldn't believe how this two high school dropout is able to make this kind of money. And he's like, he's like, he's like, oh my God. And, you know, and, and the check that we sent him like 30,000, 40,000, and he takes, you know, for him to make this kind of money, his restaurant only makes 15,000 or so profit, profit, 15,000 or so profit. Dude, that's like one of my deal. And I really don't negotiate. I really even don't want to do a 15K deal, right? <laughs> So when I sit down and talk to him and he sees the, oh my God, dude, he was, he was so happy. He came in and hugged Lon. He was just so happy and, and, and know that. And uh, he told her, this is the reason why he brought him over to see him succeed like this. And he also said that, and um, his kid is going to college and he wants his kid to come and learn with us. Right. But his kid like this, this is, it's not what they like. So they're like, right? And he keep on pushing. He's like, you should go visit and stay with your, because cause he literally texts us and said, hey, it's summertime. Are you guy okay? Like this guy, you guy, Tyler, extremely Asian traditional. All Asian tradition is the guy. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, he asked, he asked Lon, but he also asked me because I'm a husband, you know, I'm just the in-laws. And I said, yeah, anytime, you know, and then um, he said, you know, my kid graduated, he, they go to college, but they, they, they're like, they kind of like, don't know, they kind of don't know which, this route they're going and they're parting. They're, 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 he, he see that they're, they're going on the wrong path. And I remember texting him a quote from Jim Rome. I said, formal education will only make you a living. Self-education is what makes you a fortune. And this is what he said. He said, now I agree with you because you guys actually live that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, but, but listen, if, you don't, if, if you're not successful in his eyes, dude, I don't care what you say, bro. He won't listen. So, so, so being able to get the success, it, now, I, now we kind of convince him to like, hey, you don't need the education right? Like you don't need to go to cool school, go to college and all that. You can be successful, right? Um, you know, so he, he understand that. But then this is, this, this is the one thing that he also said, bro. He said, Kong, listen, I want you to understand this. Not everybody can do what you guys do. There are high school dropout, but not all of them can do what you do. You guys just have the commitment and the drive and you guys want it more than anybody else. That's why you guys made it happen. And, uh, and so I want those of you guys to understand out there that if you want it, if you are determined, you can have whatever you want. you got to understand that it's going to require a massive amount of work. And just like Tyler said, man, be careful who you spend your time with and be careful who you sh share your goals and your dream with. Because I know some of, like the thing is, Tyler, when my wife and I, man, um, you know, at, at 18 and 19, dude, we distant a lot of our friends and our families. And I think there was one time where we kind of share our goals with uh, actually her brother. So when we first got into real estate, we sh which is the older brother that she, she super respect. And, and we, we told him, hey, we're going to get into real estate. He freaks out. He, the reason why he freaks out, bro, because he did the whole real estate game. He played the whole real estate game. But in 2008, bro, it hit him so bad, bro. He almost lost everything and, and got wiped out. So when he, so I think Bla and I got into real estate learning in 2012 or 13, we told him about it and he said, do not get your, do not get into real estate. He said, do not get in. And, 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 um, and I think uh, last year or so he told Lon, he said, I apologize for telling you guys not to start. I'm glad that you guys did got into real estate. So the thing is, you guys, <clears throat> you know, when, when, when you, when you listen to someone, it's very important that you listen to somebody that have successfully done what you wanted to do. They got to be successfully done what you want to do. Like when you want to get into real estate and you ask your parents or your friends that has not no knowledge in real estate, have never been successful at it, and they give you their tips and their opinions. And sometimes it's the wrong tips, wrong opinion can really push you and, and scare you away saying it's illegal, saying that you can't do it, saying that you need a lot of money, saying that, you know, that, that, that you're going to get yourself in trouble and things like that. So get yourself the right for um, you know, the, uh, the right education, man. Listen, like don't get tips and advice from people that have not successfully done the game that you want to play, okay? Um, so anyways, Tyler, I'm going to hand it to you and we're going to wrap this up, man. Any last word that you want to say to anyone out there that are just like you, man, that are like in their 20s and really trying to figure uh, their way out in life, man? I think the best advice that I've heard comes from Elon Musk and if you're asking people for advice saying, should I start this business? The best advice he could give is saying, don't do it because that'll either do one of two things that'll discourage you and you won't do it and you wouldn't have succeeded in the first place or that'll just fire you up and just make you want to prove that person wrong. That's my advice. Don't do it. I love it. You guys, Tyler, I want to say, bro, thank you so, so much for coming on, man. And dude, congrats. And obviously, um, I, I, I look for more uh, to come from you. And, uh, you know, thank you, thank you for inspiring me and motivate me, man, seeing how young you are starting it with the right mindset. Because I, I know what I – dude, I know myself when I was 21. When I was 21, I was going home every weekend playing poker with my family. Dude, didn't have the proper mindset, bro. So <laughs> seeing you at that age is already kind of locked in. Dude, I'm so happy for you. And uh, for those of you, listen, man, if you recently closed your first wholesale deal, shoot me an email over to Wholesale to Millions, but you got to show me the money. Show me the checks. <laughs> Love to bring you onto the channel so you, just like Tyler, can share your stories, your first wholesale deal. The reason I do this is to help inspire and motivate those of you who are struggling, trying to get that first deal done. And just like Tyler said, man, like 
when you haven't got, it, got, got your first deal, you really going off of faith and belief. And, you know, faith and belief because you are trusting the unseen. And once you got it, listen, it becomes a reality. And now I know Tyler just want to blow it up because he knows if he can do that, he can do it a hundred million times over and over again. So those of you who are, um, if you're in the verge of giving up, listen to me, man, you have gone too far. You have gone too far to give up, right? And, and, and if you're giving up, you're not just giving up on yourself. Listen to me. You're giving up on all the people that believed in you, that trust you, that needs you to be successful so you can provide them the lifestyle, the freedom that they and you deserve. So anyways, you guys, thank you so much, Tyler. I appreciate it. For those of you new thank to you, the Kong. channel, smash the subscribe button. Until next time, you guys, take care. Thanks a lot, Tyler. Thanks, Kong. Take care. Later, bro.